Hey folks, this is Jim. Welcome to my channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. Leave a comment. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick workaround for uh, problem keys on the Kurzweil 2000 series keyboards. This may apply to other Kurzweil keyboards as well. Briefly, the problem is you hit a key and it either doesn't trigger at all or it triggers at full velocity, full volume. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's play our acoustic piano sound starting at middle C. My problem note is up here at C5, one octave above. You hear it? Playing very lightly, but that one bad note triggers at full velocity and it would ruin anything that you would play. Okay, so how do you fix this using the Kurzweil itself? Let me zoom in here on our display. And the, the key to this is setup mode. So here I am in program mode where we select our patches on the Kurzweil. But if I go into setup mode, there we go. You'll see I have uh, a couple uh, fixed patches already. So what you would do here is you would uh, create a new setup and begin to edit it. I'm going to click the edit button here. So here's how this works. Um, setups are a performance mode on the Kurzweil. So what you do there is you um, you, you kind of use it for splits and layering and you can split the key range on the keyboard across eight different zones. So the key to this fix is to set up a brand new setup with three zones, all assigned to the same patch on the same MIDI channel. Not how you would normally do setups, but that's the trick. So you can see zone one, I have acoustic piano on channel one. Zone, uh, zone two, same patch, same channel, same for zone three, right? Once you've got that set up, you then go to the key velocity page. That would be right here. And you would now, here's where you can, for each zone in the setup, you can define a key range for it. So my first zone goes from the lowest possible note all the way up to just before the bad note. Zone two is just the bad note. The same key, low and high. That would be C5 in my case. And then zone three begins with that C sharp five all the way up to the, the highest range. Next, you go to the velocity offset setting. And you can see for zone three, it's zero, we don't want to touch that. For zone one, same thing. This is all basically default settings. And zone two, you can see I've cut that velocity by minus 73. So what that's telling the keyboard is when you play that note in that zone number two, cut its velocity minus 73. You could make it positive. So if you have a key that doesn't strike at all, this might work. I don't know, I haven't tested it. But for a key that triggers at full velocity, which is velocity number 127, here you're gonna be able to blend that in. That's the basic concept. So if I exit out of this, I can try it out. Let's just dial it up. And we'll go back to our keyboard. Here's middle C again, C4. You see what happened? It's blending it in. Now, it doesn't make the key dynamic, 
it's always going to play at that same velocity, but it's a much more manageable velocity. Okay, that's the basic concept to it. There are other tweaks that you can add here. So, for example, um, you could, let's say you are, uh, you want to be able to like not have to change the program in all three zones every time. So what you would do in that case would be you would um, edit the setup. Go back into edit mode. And on the channel program page, make sure that you set the entry prog chg setting sorry i'm not showing this that is set to be off so what that's telling the keyboard is even though i put a program in there don't send the program change so whatever happens to be on pro, uh, the program you selected on channel one the setup will pick that up when you go into setup mode so just to show you how that works I'm going to exit out. We'll go into program mode. Let's dial up a completely different sound. Here's, let's say, an electric piano. And then I'll go, you have to go back into setup mode for this to work at all. But when I go to setup mode, now it's going to take what I've selected, the program I've selected on channel one, and bring that in like that. Okay. There's many other things you can do here. So if you're working with um, MIDI sequencers, there's some tweaks there. You can switch the destination setting from local to uh, local from local plus MIDI to MIDI only so that turns off local keyboard control uh, so in that case the Kurzweil will only make a sound on the assigned channel when it receives a MIDI message coming back from the sequencer or echoed back from the sequencer it will still be able to send MIDI notes out to the sequencer so you can record these masked notes that are fixed and then you can also edit the velocities if you really need to change the dynamics on that one note. And now you can use your Kurzweil with uh, software synths over MIDI. So I tested all this using this setup. You, you're sending the notes out on that channel and it's going to play the software synth with the masked velocity on that, that note. And you can uh, do some fancy tricks with MIDI sequencing as well. So you can uh, you can always reroute the sequencer's MIDI output to another MIDI channel, like channel two on the sequencer, and then send that back out to the keyboard to play. So your velocity hack can be basically you're using channel one in my case as your control, and then you can so send that out to any other channel. Uh, and it'll, it'll work nicely that way when you're recording a sequence. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know in the comments if you are able to have some success here with that. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.